Hi everyone, hope you all are fine. I'm Alina S. Kumar, faculty in Logic School of Management. And today, here we have our dear, dearest, Arjun Jayaprasad, Global Rank 1 for the ACCA Professional Optional Paper, Advanced Financial Management. He has bagged this rank with a tremendous score of 98 out of 100. So without wasting any time, let's hear what our dear rank holder has to talk to us. Okay, so over to you, Arjun. Thank yeah, you so much, sure. ma'am. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I hope I'm audible and just a second, I just want to share my screen Yes, you're well. audible. Yeah, sure. Okay, so firstly, we've got 57 participants. That's a good number. Yeah. So I just want to thank every one of you for being a part of this session, firstly, because uh, it's absolutely an honor. It's an honor to be a part of this meeting held by Logic School of Management. And thank you so much, Alina Mam, for hosting me as well. So I just wanted to, you know, do a presentation. I mean, when you hear a presentation, it's boring. Of course, you dread it, you try to run from it, but destiny still arrives. I'm just going to try to make it less boring as possible. But I wanted to discuss something that um, might help you with your ACC journey as students, or with anything of that sort, where you're trying to achieve something in your life. So most of us have this problem of dealing with uh, you know, fear. So how do we conquer that fear? And the first question that you need to answer is, should I practice more? And if I can practice, can I have a control over that fear? And if you can't do anything about it, just leave it. So that's what I'm trying to address over here. I'm trying to understand what ACCA is on a more global level, but at the same time, what it would be on a more personal level as well. So here is a definition of what is ACC. So it's found in 1904, the Association of Chartered Certified Accountants. You can read that how you want at your expense. You can find this on um, Wikipedia as well. Just control C, control V. I just did that and that's the information you get. But what is ACC to a person is different. It can be subjective. It can have a different perspective when you start looking at it from a different angle. And that's what I'm going to be doing here. For me, ACCA is a culmination of these things. Now, what am I trying to do over here? It's nothing difficult. I'm trying to relate the five elements of nature with certain characteristics that an ACCA professional should have. So let's start off with fire. Now, why fire? Mm, knowing about the current things, I've associated fire with current affairs. So the reason why I've done that is because fire is something um, that I can relate with people when they know about stuff. When you're a person who's aware of what's happening around you, I think that's the most important thing that you need to have not living under the rock, but knowing what's happening around you, business related issues, political things, you live in the present, you understand what's happening around you. And I have a picture of Cristiano Ronaldo in the background. It's because I believe he's a person who is relevant. He's at the age of 37 and he's still striving to be relevant. And he is a popular, inspiring footballer among all of us. So. He knows his stuff. He's doing what's relevant to date. So that's what I'm talking about when it comes to current affairs. I, I would say a person who knows his current issues and current affairs is fire. So it's more like a new gen term for badass. So yeah. Now, the next thing that I would associate is space with imagination. As you know, space is endless. It doesn't have a beginning. It doesn't have a have an end, but um, I mean, as for this, um, we know about science. 
we never know where it's beginning and when it's ending. So space is what I would associate with imagination. When it comes to ACC papers, this is something that I've experienced. When I've written ACC papers, I try to put some creative elements in certain parts of my answers. And I think I have been awarded marks because of those creative elements. Now, how do you achieve this creative uh, thing of imagination? Keep reading, read new stuff, read um, business related news, read journals. Uh, it's just gonna keep you moving and you will be able to unleash that, um, that block of not knowing issues about what's happening around you. So unleash it, let your imagination go wild. The next one is air, and I associate air with communication. The reason why I do that is because, okay, I don't know if most of you believe in zodiac signs. So one of my friends identified me as a, as a Gemini, and uh, Gemini is an air sign, which means one of my core competences is to speak, communication. So why is communication an important aspect when it comes to being an ACC professional? let's say any professional for that matter, I would say it's important because it's not about having a grammatical you know, proficiency when you speak in terms of your vocabulary or anything of that sort. What is important is that you have a logical flow as you speak so that the person who is listening to you wants to listen to you, all right? So that's something very important, having to understand that communication. And that's the reason I put the picture of Martin Luther King. Even after 58 years of that speech that he gave at the memorial, uh, Lincoln Memorial at Washington, it's still relevant. People learn how to dream and how to achieve their goals. The next one is Earth, your foundation. How strong are you with your concepts? That's important because in ACCA, there is so many areas where they test your foundation. And uh, something that's important is if your foundation isn't good, your communication, your imagination and your current affairs doesn't matter. Because in the end, what matters is how strong are you with your concepts? When you play a game, you play by the rules. So that's one of the important things that I think matters a lot when it comes to being an ACC professional as well. And the last one is water. And I've associated that with adaptability. Well, you might be thinking, okay, water. So human beings are made of 71% of water and Bruce Lee is a human being. So A is equal to B is equal to C. No, that's where the plot is this. Haha, <laughs> water and adaptability is associated with um, Bruce Lee because in one of his interviews, he said, be water, my friend. When you pour water into a cup, it takes the shape of the cup. When you pour water into a bottle, it takes the shape of the bottle. So yes, that's exactly what is the concept of ad adaptability as well. If you have to adapt to a particular situation, you need to understand. And for that, all those four elements plays a very important role. If you think about it, it does. Now, it also has so much association with the art of selling. And that's something that you can learn when you go into the SBL paper of uh, ACCA, which is a strategic business leader for those of you who don't know. So yes, these are the five elements of nature that I've associated with some important characteristics that I've associated with ACCA professionals. Now, why did I do that? What's What's the point of you know, associating all these things? The first and foremost thing that I've realized when it comes to achieving a goal is you personalize your goal. When you personalize your goal, what happens is you try to connect with it. No matter what, no matter how bizarre it is, you try to connect with it. And when you do that, you symbolize things around you. You think, you start thinking things that doesn't make sense to others, but makes so much sense to you. And that's how you be a person out of that box. You be a different league. So that's it. Personalize, symbolize, and relate 
with whatever goal you want to achieve, whether it be a profession, whether it be a person who wants to, you know, be a proficient person in your, in your art, anything for that matter. It's important that you personalize. So yes, that would be the end of, end of the first segment. And I think the second segment would be um, a questionnaire between me and Alina Ma'am. So I would be asking some questions. So I go first. And after that, Alina Ma'am would be asking me some questions. So are you ready for the questions, Ma'am? Yes, shoot. All right then. So, okay. So I'm going to give you a very light hub question first. Okay. Uh, nothing difficult. Okay. What was your biggest hurdle while pursuing ACC? As promised, a very light question. Okay, so my hurdle, like, um, to be frank, I didn't have any much that sort of a big hurdle. But um, to put forward, let me say, I'm not so good in theory. We have a mix of theory as well as numerical papers throughout our 13 uh, ACCA papers. Some of them are particularly theoretical. So um, I don't have that sort of grip when it comes to theory aspects, but I'm really good in numbers. Like numerical papers, yeah, I scored well because I know how to crack that. But when it comes to theory papers, I, I lagged a bit. So that was a to be frank, one of the biggest hurdle, like uh, as you said earlier, the strategic business lead, the SBL paper, that was the very first professional level paper that I have attended. Yeah. So in that paper, excuse me, am I audible? Yes, yeah? you are audible, ma'am. I'm a bit? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So yeah. So while preparing for that paper, uh, I found it very difficult. But I didn't stay back. I didn't sit and cry. I have formulated my own strategy. That is, I would like to share to every SSC aspirants here. That is, um, how I cracked the SBL paper was, I took out all the past SBL question papers from the ACCA's uh, website. It is available to you. Uh, just log into your My ACCA account and under students, you are provided with the past exam questions. And I took that and I have worked it out of my own. That is, first of all, I'll read the question and then I'll write my own answer. And then I would uh, compare my answer to that with the examiner's answer key. And then I re-evaluated where I went wrong and I made a note on that, like where I went wrong. And then I write to reproduce it again. I wrote that same question's answer, keeping in mind the examiner's answer key as well. And I again tried to replicate it again and again. And with that, I scored and I passed SBL at the very first attempt. So for me, that was one of the hurdle and I'm sure there are other ACC aspirants just like me who are good with numbers, but have certain difficulty when it comes to theory paper. So this is a good strategy. If you want, you can adopt it. Yeah, that's it. All right, that, that was a nice um, answer. I guess a lot of ACC aspirants would be finding that quite helpful. Now, the next question would be, as an ACC lecturer, yeah. what would be that one advice you would give to your younger self who found it toiling to pass through ACCA exams on a more personal note? Okay, so to my younger version, I would like to congratulate myself on, uh, on taking ACCA. Like, seriously, it was a rod note taken. Like, um, after completing my graduation, it was just me. It was just me in my class. We were a class of around 60 or 65 students, but it was just me who was who had joined for ACC. So particularly that was a raw note taken for me because not uh, many of them went for uh, C, yeah, chartered accountancy and maybe for CMA, I guess. But none of them has joined for ACC. So it was a pretty... Yeah, it was a pretty uh, terrible time for me because I didn't have support from my friends. So not support in the sense like uh, nobody knew anything about ACC. It was not pretty uh, flourished there. So, 
but still i i stood firm with my decision i had my parents my mom's support she was my biggest support system with her support as well as with the support of the uh, uh, logic staff logic management vigimis and every coordinators and my dear faculties and with god's grace i was able to pass all the papers at the very first attempt and managed to bat pretty good marks itself and i think i just want to congratulate my younger self on staying firm on that decision even when no one else was there right. that's a very astute answer uh, well uh, right the next question i think is in what manner do you think acc has managed to change your perspective um as opposed to a normal degree qualification yes that's a that's a very good question like choosing acc as i said before was the best decision one of the best decision that i have taken in my life so i have completed my graduation and then i joined for acc okay so i am a bcom graduate and then i joined for acc if i have stopped my studies are just after completing the graduation i wouldn't have anything that i have now see now i have everything that i wanted like let it be pay scale or let it be the appreciation recognition status everything i have everything what i need now my standard of living has improved tremendously in fact so yeah so if i just have stopped there just after my graduation i don't think i would have got this many things and just because of choosing acc now i am here sitting with heart full filled with joy and i'm overwhelmed to be a faculty your faculty as well as my students whichever batch i have taken i used to get a bunch of dears there i will have some best buddies from the batch and that relationship with my students as friends that really keeps me alive and uh, i think that really matters to me a lot of course that's a very uh, uh, one of the most important characteristics that i've noticed in you as a person as well so thank you for <laughs> thank being you. wonderful in that that perspective now the next question is uh, this was something that you said in the beginning with respect to is sbl so i i would just want to uh, dive into that a little more detail okay. in detail so how do you think as a person who finds it easy to grasp a concept Yeah. but is taken aback while articulated in writing can improve their comprehension skills and what did you do to improve that okay so in acc as you said in the start of the session concepts is the must it is the basic foundation i guess yes it is the foundation only if you have proper grip over the conceptual clarifications you can crack your acc exam not just mugging up of textbook is enough no that's no use you will never pass a single paper single even if it is a theory paper you will not pass just by mugging up all the textbook all you need is a conceptual clarification so if you are okay with that for that you should focus on your lectures if you are doing it self okay fine you can go through the different videos provided by acc you can go through your youtube videos whatever the thing is you should have this conceptual clarification that is the first thing Now the next thing is you who you do have the clarification you know the concept but you don't know how to apply it there are certain students who who has this problem so what you can do my only advice for you is that practice we have basically two published authorized uh, authorized publishers the one is bpp and other one is kaplan okay so take out those kits the question practice session the kits revision kits and work out as many questions as possible not just the numericals also the theory questions as well take it out work it out and the next thing is don't just look in the question look at the solution in the back side and then do the question no that is not how it works no you're wrong first of all read a question try to understand what the examiner is asking you and then try to work it off your own let it be right let it be wrong that doesn't matter once you got your own answer look at the solution in the back side and then compare your answer with that and make sure if you are right okay why you are right and if you went wrong where did you go wrong and why make a note of that and 
practice more and more questions that doesn't mean that you should do the same question a zillion time no that i didn't mean that just one time a question practice is enough but when you do that make sure you understood that concept where did you go wrong all these things so with constant practice you will have a grip over your concepts as well as the application of the concepts in your main exam okay so that you can save a lot of time as well so i think this is how you can articulate that thing that hurdle all right uh, that's that's a that's a pretty nice answer now um the final question for you ma'am okay um i'm going to let you free uh how much do you think acca has evolved in setting up their exams compared to their previous models has it been more industry based or knowledge intensive that's a very good question from acca's reason perspective let me let me say i take this time to congratulate acca for being more industry specific like you know uh, past few years years to few years ago so complete acca exams were paper based but now it is all computerized even the professional level is computerized so there is a very good thing because I, i took all my acc exams i mean the professional level papers uh, examination all in paper in writing i didn't uh, do this anything in the computer but i think computerizing this uh, professional level was one of the best move made my acc because this is what the industry want see after being an affiliate or after being a partly qualified acc when you jo if if you enter into the job it is not the paperwork that they intend from you or the what that they need from you what they need is this uh, technology aspects the spreadsheet you should be good in excel so i think acc has put forward that thing or they ha- they are trying to incorporate what the corporate needs into our exam pattern so that our students will have an ease as soon as they enter into the exams i mean after completing exams enter into the job they will have a particular uh, a good uh, environment i think they will be over get used to such environment i think it's a very good step made by acc i think i would also add to that point by uh, bringing um, into attention of how eps a module which is the ethics sure. and professional um, skills module has helped a lot of uh, students in not just students a lot of professionals as well in in improving their soft skills not about their mm-hmm. you know hard skills but the soft skill improvement which could be very important to uh, a person who does audit or let's say gets into the field of finance they find it important that you are able to handle um you know a spreadsheet in ease when you don't do that i guess you you crumble down how much ever you're strong with your concepts so yes um, that's a great point ma'am um, thank you thank you so over to you ma'am now oh, got to ask the so question i think i'm relieved now yeah <laughs> <laughs> hopefully hopefully <laughs> okay so let me take this opportunity to congratulate you again on your achievement and My pleasure. yeah so ajun how do you feel after being this global rank holder how do you feel um how do i feel to be honest i really didn't feel anything you know particularly uh great but at the same time i was excited i was definitely excited i wouldn't say i was over the world or you know feeling the best because i am still uh, not an affiliate yet i'm still working to be an affiliate i think i'm going to be so happy when i'm going to be an affiliate because i've been looking forward to be an acca uh since the age of 16 and uh i used to go for conferences i used to go for seminars uh back in dubai i used to meet people um as my cousins who who are you know acca fca today uh so it was it was definitely a wonderful journey for me uh since my first acca people which i attempted in 2019 it used to be a great journey for me so yes i'm looking forward for that day when i'm going to pass acc which is hopefully going to be soon fingers crossed so <laughs> until then i'm going to say i'm definitely happy at getting this recognition but at the same time the grinding doesn't stop it keeps moving 
So good luck on being this ACC affiliate and we are sure definitely you will reach there very soon. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. Arjun, so from the students' aspects, all the ACC aspirants uh, percept, per perspect, let me ask you, can you, can you share your way of dealing the paper let it be any acca papers but i'm giving more focus on the professional level paper what was your strategy on dealing with the different paper that is say for example uh the way you dealt uh, with aff advanced financial management is entirely different from the way you have you must have dealt with sbl strategic business leader because both are different kind of papers so yeah. Uh, yeah, I just want to know a common strategy that you have used that you would like to share to the further ACCA aspirants. Could you please share? So let's talk in perspective of SBL and AFM at the moment. So SBL oh, is sure. Strategic Business Leader and AFM Advanced Financial Management. Now, for SBL, there were so many theories and models that you had to learn. Yeah. So I would like to take um, note of my lecturer as well at the moment, because he was a wonderful lecturer, Dr. Shan Jayashekara. Um, he was able to get the concepts into our head, all our students, all the students in that class, in a much innovative manner. He used to take real life concepts and mm -hmm. put it into perspective to us. So I think when it comes to SBL, what you need to know is how to do um, your answers in a more wider perspective which is being a little more innovative, being more practical with your answers, rather than, um, you know, that's why I was telling about imagination uh, yeah. as one of those concepts that is important um, with, your, with your SBL papers. So when you attempt SBL, you need to know that you cannot take down those questions. I mean, your points right from the textbook and just uh, omit it there. Uh, I think what we're looking for the ACC examiners are looking for something different. And to be honest, there was not one theory or model that I put in my examination while I was writing my SBL paper, not one. But why did I learn those models and theories? Right now, when I think about it, I think those models and theories were able to help me think in a manner so that I could write or frame my answers in such a manner that would be more, um, I would say, convincing to the examiner in order to get the marks that I'm supposed to get in order to um, pass the examination. So, yeah. So what about your AFM, advanced now, financial? When it comes to AFM, what I've understood is it's about practice. Yes. It's about, it's about deadly practice <laughs> because uh, uh, the week that I was in your class, ma'am, I realized I was making debilitating mistakes. And I know <laughs> I still remember I, I sent you three, um, three digits, yeah. which were three numbers. And I still remember you said you were, you were very patient and you said, I'll discuss the answer. But all the three numbers were wrong. And I knew at that point, this is a deadly paper. I don't want to deal with this paper like this. And that the week consecutive to that, I spend more than, I guess, 18 hours for that whole week, 18 oh. hours in order to learn all those questions, because I was going through a lot of questions, which I think is not the right way, because what you need to do is you need to make short notes. I didn't do, I didn't make short notes. What I did was I literally went and I used to keep on practicing, practicing, practicing. And, uh, of course, AFM can um, award you marks for your practice area, but at the same time, you need to be able to explain what you've written as well uh, from the perspective of reports. So I think it's important to give, uh, you know, a really good amount of time to your practice, but at the same time, you shouldn't forget that you need to explain. So understand how you frame your answers and at the same time, how you're going to be explaining it in a more professional manner. Yeah. So yeah, so that's, that's two different stark uh, realities when it comes to attempting SBL and AFM at the same time. But you need to understand that SBL is a paper where you are gonna be in a more business related perspective, but when it comes to AFM, it's more of calculations, but, but at the same time, not just you know um, 
simple calculations and then you know putting it there so that the examiner can uh, predict that's the answer you're trying to say you need to explain it you need to be good with your language so yeah yeah that's, so I hope uh, all of you, those ACCA aspirants who are uh, going to take the professional level, as well as those you are pursuing the professional level, got a clear idea on how to how to handle the different papers. Please remember that I just want to add a, a, one, a point over here that is, please remember all papers are different. Don't handle uh, all the papers in the same way. The way of handling SBL is entirely different from handling the paper AFM. I hope you understood what Arjun said. Yeah, he has put his point over here. And another point I want to uh, put light on uh, to the ACA, ACC aspirants is that, see your professional level, even if it is an AFM, AFM paper, yes, you do have calculation there, but it is not just about calculation. No, you may be good in calculation, but you should know how to describe your answer. Only then you can crack that paper. I can assure you that just calculation is not enough for even if for your SBR paper or your AFM or ATX or any paper, these papers have calculation in them, but that is not enough. You should be able to explain to the examiner what it is. What is the concept? You should be able to explain it. Okay, so please keep that in mind. Okay, continuing Arjun. So uh, among this uh, different prof uh, optional papers, ACC has provided us with, us with four optional papers. Hmm. What's the reason that you have chosen AFM? And I think you have chosen AAA, Advanced Audit and Assurance, right? Yes, yeah? I've chosen so, AAA. Yeah. So do question. you have any particular, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, do you have any particular reason for taking this AFM and AAA, like, do you want to be an auditor? Or uh, are you looking into the current economic prospects? And what is the reason, real reason? I would say, I would say I'm still figuring that out because okay. you never can say what is more important or what is your area of interest until you try it out or practice um, on a more, you know, um, face-to-face interaction with that particular concept. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, again, I do have, um, you know, an aspect aspiration to be into the field of finance, where valuations would be a place I, I would like to go into. But at the same time, I think audit is an area I would be really interested in, because that's an area where we can really learn about a lot of things. So the reason why I chose AFM was because um, I knew I was good with financial management. And I knew there is, there is a, a conundrum of things um to learn from that that uh, area of learning in financial management and that's one of the uh, main areas or main reasons why i thought i should be doing afm to be very honest um i did have other inhibitions of doing um, atx but again um what i wanted to do was afm which which was more like a more like an inner calling i wanted to do afm at any cost um and i and I did it, and yeah, I guess it's one of the best decisions I've made. So yeah. <laughs> yes. So yeah. So I hope you understood. Uh, everyone understood why we do AFM. So another point I want to not uh, bring to your attention is that choose your optional papers according to your own discretion. Don't go after what your friends has taken. Okay, my friend has taken AFM, so I should take AFM. No, don't do that. If you want to become an auditor, if you feel like you want to be an auditor, go for your AAA paper, Advanced Audit and Assurance. No, if you if, if you think that you're good in tax and you want to be a tax analyst or something like that, go for your ATX paper. So that is how, what are you good at? You should go for that, okay? So that is how you choose your career, okay? So once you have completed your ACCA, you're completely a professional. So my point is I have, I know a lot of students, a lot of my friends have chosen their optional papers in the way that their friends have chosen. And unfortunately they are not able, they were not able to crack the exam. So to all those ACCA aspirants there, my humble request is please don't go after your friends. Ask to yourself, what are you capable of? I'm sorry, what are you capable of? 
uh, what what do I want to be good at? If I, if you want to be good, you want to be a senior finance manager. Come on, let's study advanced financial management. So ask yourself about what paper or what prospect you want to be. Okay. Yes. So Arjun, uh, let me ask. Um, yes. How was it when you uh, moved from applied? skill level to the professional level what was uh, how did you feel how did you try to manage that uh, change in the phase the phase in the exam pattern the way you are learning uh, was was it tremendous uh, it was intimidating more than yeah. tremendous uh, because uh, i was really happy that i was able to just clear my fundamentals from the applied skills uh, of course but at the same time getting into the professional you know level was something different because uh, more than just the papers, it was just intimidating to just uh, the thought of it for me. I'm just being personal with, with how I'm explaining, but I think that's what pushed me forward to you know understand a lot of concepts from different perspectives. And when it comes to SBR, um, if you just try to relate it with FR, in FR, you would be looking more at the concepts of creating um, all these financial statements. Um, but when I, you know, came across a question in SBR, I was I was flipping because that was a different kind of an experience for me, which which I am definitely going to remember and try to be better at because that's exactly where I want to be um, when it comes to corporate finance because you want to deal with situations that are new. And uh, this particular uh, experience of where you will have to deal with um, new situations, but old standards that you, you need to use your judgment and try to apply it. Yes. That's a totally different experience. That's something that is going to truly push you to the limits. So I think that's um, some of those things that I discovered when I came to the um, professional level. It, it was totally different. It, it opened a lot of doors of how you could look at a particular paper, how you could explain certain concepts in your language by playing uh, by the rules. So I guess my understanding of how a paper should be answered has also improved while I jumped from the applied skills level to the professional level, which is the strategic. As I think um, when we were in our applied skills level, most of the questions that we used to answer used to be a little, a little. Um, I would say, it used to be more to the point, and it wasn't. Uh, I would say it is more of a textbook material. Um, kind of. But, yes. But when we came to the professional side, we started thinking. We started, uh, you know, uh, using our own words. We started thinking about new stuff. So. These were two stark ideas or stark um, personalities, I would say. I grew up from that to this. So, of course, I think that was uh, one of the best experiences when it comes to doing ACC. And I think ACC has given importance to that perspective of how you need to um, you know, improve in giving your answers in a much, um, you know, I would say, in a much uh, methodical manner. At the same time, it, it's more like a systematic progress rather than just a tremendous change. It, it wasn't rapid. It was more, uh, more um, systematical and slow, which is something important to a, to a professional. Yes, the professional level look at you just as a professional. Yes. So that the point is, you should never look at your skill level and your professional level in the same way. Both are entirely different. The way you handle it, the way you look into each paper is entirely different. The way you prepare is entirely different when it comes to your applied level, skill level, and your professional level. Yes. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, Arjun, you have taken exemptions on certain people, like you yes, have I studied have. in Christ. Yeah, Christ, and you have I taken. I was in Christo Giant. Christ. Christo ah, Giant Christ Christ yeah. Yes. So you have taken exemption, and then you have joined for ECC. So how yeah. do you think? Uh, has taken uh, taking this exemption was is okay for you, or do you find it like I should have uh, done all the other papers as well? Did you have such a feeling that I shouldn't have taken the exemption at any point of time? 
there are always inhibitions in your head when um, when you think about certain papers uh, on a more knowledge aspect when you try to understand a particular concept and if you have not um, you know come across that concept uh, on a knowledge level you definitely have inhibitions and yes I do have inhibitions of that uh, but at the same time I think as a professional once you move on that doesn't matter once you get into a professional setting it's it's part of the process you keep learning you um, understand what's what's the you know state of the art technology that you need to deal with and things are changing uh, a lot of things are changing at the same time so i do think um, learning those papers are important but at the same time it's a it's a boon you know getting these exemptions are definitely a boon at the same time but i would say um, if I have a choice to, you know, learn them once again, I would do it. No question about it. And uh, yes, I would say certain papers, if you get an exemption, that might not be good to your, you know, professional level yeah, as well. Because yeah. there are certain uh, students who get uh, exemptions till, you know, F9. For me, I would say when I got exemptions till F6, uh, it wasn't so difficult for me to you know deal with f7 f8 and f9 because i was able to get through the process of learning and attempting yes. those papers but when you totally get those exemptions to f9 i think there are consequences on how you would be attempting your strategic level papers because it's it's a totally different world um but i think it's still manageable it's it's going to be difficult but it's still manageable I think it depends on the caliber of different students. Do absolutely, you know? absolutely. No? Yeah. Yes. I would, I would so, totally agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was really informative. Yes. Um, okay. So earlier at the start of this, uh, in your during your presentation, I think you said something about making short notes. Like, no, in do in during your AFM, you forgot to take your short notes. Make your short yes, notes. Yes. Yes, I did. Yeah. Okay, so so can you can you explain a bit more on that, like the importance of having the short notes, not just for the AFM, for all your ACCA papers. What do you think? The importance of short notes, okay, making your so own notes. I have a different belief system when it comes to short okay. notes. Uh, it's because this is the first paper. AFM is my first paper that I've not done any short notes. I've not okay. normally when I do a paper, I have documents. Um, in my laptop for different different papers, I mean different uh, topics. Yeah. But for this particular paper, AFM, I had no short notes. And I'm not, not trying to say that short notes um, are not important. It is highly important because the last week I realized how important <laughs> short notes are. Because for every single paper, SBR, SBL, um, AAA, I mean, I mean triple, I'm going to do AAA, AA, FR and um, FM. I used to make short notes. I used to go through them and uh, I used to go for the examination and I found it really helpful. But for AFM, I, I was lazy. I would say lazy because I've done so many questions and I was like, that's enough. Uh, I think I need to stop doing it. And normally I do it in the last week. Um, the last week is where I start doing my short notes, but I didn't do that. But that's not a good strategy. I would suggest it's very important that you make short notes with respect to every chapter or even you can be um, good with um, the concepts. If you go through certain questions, you will know this particular area, you need to make a short note because that's going to make you understand why you do that question. Um, it might be a technique. It might not be a particular concept. It might be just a technique. But if you can take a short note of that particular technique, that helps. That definitely helps. There is no doubt about it. Yes. I do support the views of Arjun because I think short notes are really important for you. Absolutely. Not just from your textbook. I don't say it's from your textbook that you should prepare. You have Google. Go Google it. You have YouTube videos. Go, go for it. And whatever the little thing, maybe you understood a small point, just write it down somewhere. And that is going to help you in your revision phase. That is That will be really beneficial for you. So those who don't have such a habit, please start it. It's never too late. So 
please start it. And even after your exam phase, when you're going for an interview, definitely you can make use of it, right? So do start, yeah, keep a habit of making the short notes, okay? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. In your presentation, you have told us the importance of communication, right? right. Yeah. I just want to add on that. What do you think is the impact of uh, English, the English language and the ACCA papers? Do you think there is a direct relationship between the language and cracking ACCA papers? Do you think there is a link between English and cracking papers? Okay, so for me, I think um, knowing your language, whether it be English or whether it be Malayalam or any language for that matter, it is a question of being literate. It's a question of knowing a language. So from that perspective, I make sure that my language is good. Or I try to be better every day. Try to learn new lang new words of that particular language. Try new idioms. Uh, when it comes to any language, for that matter, I'm interested in learning new things. So ACCA being um, a qualification that is being awarded by a body from UK, it definitely adds as a more added benefit to you if you're good with your language. So if you're good with your language, it can definitely be a bone. There is no doubt about it. But I don't think ACCA creates any kind of differentiation among people if you're not good with your language. All you need to do is, can you explain the concept in simple language without yes. uh, you know simple mistakes? Um, that's what it, that's what's more important, and I think that makes a whole difference um, when you know a language a little more better. You know, uh, for for those people who are looking forward to be uh, prof be exceptional professionals or you know be better at what they're doing, I think uh, it's not about just being an average in the concept, but at the same time being better in terms of how you deliver it, because. I, I love marketing. I love uh, the concept of you know selling things to people, not at the cost of their money, but at the cost of their uh, you know their interest yeah. with willingness to buy it um, genuinely. So it's it's a skill. So in order to do that, you need to be able to speak, or you need to be able to put forward that notion in writing or anything of that sort. Uh, you need to be able to good um, put that in a more understanding form, which is quite captivating. So again, ACC is not just about learning your uh, concepts, but also if you need to pass the examination, you need to ensure that you give answers so that the examiner can understand that your answers are to the point. You need to be able to convince your examiner that you know the concepts. So for that, your language can definitely be uh, something very supportive. So yes, I do think your language can be a great support system, but it's not, um, you know, one of the core competences that you need yes. to have. Yes, you're absolutely correct. Like ACCA doesn't give you anything for having grammatical uh, competency, but all, all you have to do is, you know something and you should make sure that you can you can convince them, you can express that to, you can share that to the examiner. I think that is all that matters. Okay, so dear participants, if you have anything to ask, feel free to ask, or even you can ask in the chat session, okay? Please feel free to ask. Yeah. Uh, yes, Arjun. Yes, yeah. So um, are, are you a social media addict or? <laughs> I would I wouldn't uh, put myself in a social media addict, uh, you know, perspective. But I would say I do use social media. Yes, okay. So has that affected your ACC preparation? I would say it has um, enhanced my ACC preparation because Good. I I follow a lot of um, news pages that gives you know business related information. So when there is a new information about something related to business, I get to know from the uh, social media. So there are definitely uh, two parts to a coin. So, I mean, two sides to a coin. So you need to decide how that that's gonna affect you as a person. So I think it's all about control. If you yes. have control um, over what you do with your internet usage, 
that can that can definitely you know take you to to the next level of how you look at things and in the world of social media of course it it's having a um you know horrendous effect on a lot of people especially the children um it's it's something of course uh, disturbing at the same time but at the same time we need to understand um the internet is here to support us uh, with information and not to overload with it so use it wisely rather than uh, in a more in a more misusing manner so yeah so let me ask a personal question other than right. the studies no, and all no. what no. are your hobbies or your extracurricular activities yes. other than this this is also important i would uh, uh, i would suggest to every single person who is doing an acca qualification that try to do something that could make you feel better you know um that's uh, that's something important because you need to take breaks from from the number crunching and a lot of analysis and evaluation you do while you while you learn that's um, very very vital to your sanity as a as a characteristic trait because um, i think a lot of people don't understand that uh, they they take breaks but they take a little too long breaks uh, so what i do is i sing um i read books and uh sometimes i watch football uh i love watching football so i do that as well so these are some of the things that i do when i feel bored of doing a particular question or when i'm when i'm fatigued by doing a particular question so it is important you take um, brief breaks and then get back on track Okay, uh, Arjun, we have got certain questions. The first question is, sir, I have a doubt: Is BCom with ACCA tough? BCom with ACCA tough. Okay. What do you think? Um, for me, it was engaging. BCom with ACCA because I was doing it in a college. Um, so in a college, you you are not a person who is just learning in a class. You have a lot of extra uh, extracurricular activity that you. uh got to be doing um i've got a few of my friends in the in the meeting as well and they would probably know how uh involved i am and how involved i was in uh in the college activities so for me it was rather engaging rather than tough i found it quite interesting to be in a lot of activities but it can definitely take a toll, toll on you if you have a lot of work to do a lot of work from bcom and at the same time if you have to learn for acc examination which is um coming near during the exam and your submission date of assignments is that kind of things so i would suggest um you need to be more organized uh, that's that's um a no brainer you have to be more organized as you um you know go through your acc journey Okay fine the very next question is did linkedin help you to know more and better about the working world and things like that how did you how did you use linkedin to get yourself into the working world i get i think right. working linkedin okay so getting to know working professionals is something um it's it's the core of getting into a professional world into the corporate world and linkedin is one of the best ways to do that and i realized it um in the in the second half of 2021 to be honest and i started working on my linkedin profile uh connect with a lot of new people and um put out information you can learn a lot of information from linkedin yes it's not just a social media page that keeps you you know looking at it for a long time through the like an instagram um page but it's more of informative stuff it's that's where real talk is actually going on i've really noticed people um you know having productive debates about new technology about work cultures and many other things in linkedin so i would definitely recommend people um to have a linkedin profile that can definitely you know to scale up your network of people that you know uh ma'am i've got another question Yeah. Oh, uh, so it's from I guess a person called Thomas. 
what is the extra it's thing traffic. that you thing that you've done for the two months rather than just practicing and studying? You should have done something extra. Good question, Thomas. Uh, but uh, I I'm still figuring <laughs> it out. I have no idea. I should probably ask the examiner when I see him, but you don't know. You really can't get to know the examiner. I mean, as far as I know, um, ACC doesn't uh, have that uh, kind of uh, facility. So it's it's about uh, practicing. As you said, it's it's not about just studying. Let me tell you, it's not studying that, that matters. It's about learning. I, I find these two words totally different. When you learn something, you enjoy it. When you keep studying, you don't. You you curse the subject and then you know study. So it, it's it's not something that I positively you know associate with. But learning and practicing is one of the most important things that I think can help you to move forward with your ACC journey. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of another question. Uh, another question is: After completing ACC, can we take a teaching as profession? I think I can. I can answer that question. Definitely, you can yeah. take. Uh, yeah. Definitely, you can take a teaching profession if you have a passion for teaching. Please come for teaching. If you are, if you are, uh, if you are overwhelmed by helping your fellow companions, if you want to see a smile on the students who are struggling to get that conceptual clarity, yes, definitely. So I mean, if you have a passion for teaching, definitely you can come. And as you know, we, uh, in order to be an ACCM member, you need three year work experience. We call it PER, practical experience requirement. So up to one year, if you stay in the teaching field, you can, uh, you can show that one year experience, teaching experience. But again, that two experience, two year experience should definitely go into the corporate sector. OK, so if you have a passion, definitely you can come for uh, or be a lecturer. OK, yes. Uh, so have you done more than one paper in a sitting? Um, no. I if yes, not. which were they? Okay, you haven't done. I okay. haven't done it. Yeah, I don't. I don't believe in that concept of uh, you know attempting. There are students out there who does that. Yeah, I don't know how they do it. I'm an example. Uh, yeah. Oh wow, <laughs> wonderful! You know there are students who do that. Of course, that's a great thing to do. Yeah. Um, the other day I saw this um, woman from I guess uh, Singapore or Malaysia. She did four papers in one sitting. Oh. Which, and she passed the all, passed the papers. All the papers? All the papers. So it's crazy. The reason why I wouldn't do that is not because uh, I think I can't pass it. It's because I think I need to, you know, give them so much time to learn a particular concept. And I'm ready to give them that work for that one paper. So okay. um, that's my perspective towards a particular paper. It's not because... Um, I mean, of course, there is so many things to learn, but if you know the tactic to, you know, approach a paper, you will be able to achieve it. But when I do an ACC paper, I'm not just looking forward to pass the paper, but uh, excel in it. Yes. That's my um, you know, aim. That's my aim. So I think it depends on how you want to, you yeah. know, just, if you just want to get through your papers. Yes. Yeah, just understand. Yeah, if you things. feel confident of taking more than one paper in a sit, go for it. Not just, just because of your friend has taken it. No. If you're confident, please go ahead with it. And the right combination really matters. The one rule you have you will have to keep in mind is uh, your FR paper. Take your FR paper before doing your doubly audit and insurance paper. It is a must. Because only if you know how to prepare your accounts you can audit the same so first of all clear your fr paper then go for your audit paper same comes in the professional level if you have any intention of taking AAA advanced audit and assurance as your optional paper first of all clear your sbr and if you are if you want to take AAA, take it immediately after completing your sbr because these are linked okay that's the only thing otherwise any combinations are fine just keep this two in mind Okay, another question is a very uh, nice question. Like uh, the student doesn't have a good firm in the basic concepts, and uh, I think she has got a uh, six paper exemption too, and there is a one year break as well. So, what advice can you give her to come back into track? She don't have good basic concepts. She has taken six paper exemption, and she has taken one year break. 
she she or he i'm not sure so what okay. is the advice you can give please i've had the same experience uh -huh. but not a one year uh, gap uh, during covid i took a six months gap and okay. it, it it was more like greek and latin to me when i uh, did my sbr paper so so it was like a gap after doing my fundamentals i was going into my uh, professional level papers so what i would suggest is um, have a plan in place have a very stringent um, and a meticulous plan when i say a meticulous plan you need to be able to make sure that you learn every day at least something so that you get uh, an association with the concept it's something that you can um, relate with you need to be able to relate with the concept before you know getting into doing questions or let's say uh, getting into the deep roots of that particular uh, question so in that perspective i would suggest you to have a meticulous plan in place like um from the first onwards try to read the textbook try to um you know give some time to you know process it mm -hmm. and at the same time remind yourself how the exam is going to be as in um what are the questions what is the pattern of the questions that can probably help you to you know regain consciousness of how the questions are going to be so um, if you do that um you will be able to have a better connection with how the papers are going to be so when you do that um the most important thing that you need to make sure is keeping the consistency practice every day or read every day uh it doesn't matter how small the progress it progresses what matters is you go forward so yeah yeah another question is from nias as uh, going for training i think going for the job after being an affiliate or after being partly qualified which is better enter into the job um i i don't think i'm qualified enough to say uh, okay. an answer for that but i think uh going into the sector of uh, you know education where you start teaching professionals is is something i love to do um and i don't know if i'm going to be doing that uh but hopefully if if a chance comes up i might think about it but i would always suggest to every person um who are confused uh about whether to go for teaching or uh you know work i would say what's your intention is it to make money or is it to you know uh, have a good uh, you know do you want to learn more it depends on your perspective yes uh, because i think uh i look forward to you know not just making money i want to have a good um, work life balance like i can't compromise on that it it's from my perspective okay you can have a different perspective it depends on how you want to be doing and at the same time uh i don't mind working i don't mind working i'm a person who likes to work long hours but at the same time i do want a time off when i require it i don't like to compromise with that so it depends how do you want to um, move across your journey do you want to get into the corporate world and you know be in the big leagues or do you want to just uh, be there in inspire students teach them um you know give them the right knowledge right uh, right impetus that's inspiring that's a wonderful thing and i and i'm totally up for it uh but again it's all up to you yes that's up to you if you want to go for the job after being partly qualified definitely you can go for it and make sure that you take up your studies along with it because you should uh, go this both should go hand by hand like you should uh, work you will have a lot of hectic hours and along with that you will have to continue your acca papers so if you can handle both your work as well as your studies definitely you can start your job uh, immediately after being part qualified but if you are not sure that you can take this uh, together please complete your paper be an affiliate and then start your job i think uh, okay. you can do like that yes right. another one is uh, if you don't feel offended how much time did it take uh, you on the acca journey till your last paper what's okay, the time so gap time as in the time gap uh, yeah. of i've completed my first, this first paper to your last paper so i started off in december 2019 that was my first yeah. paper i registered into acca 
back in December 2018, I guess. But let me let me try to uh, count from the first day I started my paper. So 2019, okay. 2020, 2021, and it's already 2022. So okay. yeah, uh, it's probably around three years for me to get this qualification. So, but technically four years. Okay. Hopefully by, and, and that's, um, that's provided that I complete my AAA in the next attempt, which is which I'm of going to attempt. You'll clear that, no hopefully, doubt. hopefully, it's fingers oh, crossed. Yes. I'm just being humble and uh, you know move forward. I think on an average, you would take. I, I'm talking about all the thirteen papers, okay? I'm not talking yeah. about taking exemption. On an average, you will take two point five to three years, I guess, on, on your first go. Everything on the right. very first attempt, I think it will take on an average two point five to three years. Three years. Yes. That's then the question enough. is. Uh, how many hours do you learn in a day for a particular paper? Okay, so I learn when I can. Okay, okay. so I only learn when I can. And that's mostly um, mostly the time I can learn. I don't have a problem with learning. It's not an issue for me. So um, certain days I just learn two hours. Certain days I can go like eight hours. Certain days I can just go straight 16 hours, it depends. It depends on what my mentality is. Uh, but at the same time, what uh, I try to do is I learn, I learn every day. I, okay. I don't uh, get disconnected with what I'm doing. That's the most important thing. And uh, I think it's important you play by the you know, principles that you have. You, you stick to your principles. You shouldn't you know, keep that away. If you do that, the problem is you lose, um, you know, that association that you have with that particular paper. And coming back to that is something difficult, which I really am not comfortable with dealing. So, yeah, that's basically it. Okay, so another question is, how important is soft skill development or the value-added session, daily presentation in the, pro in the profession in your perspective? So what is the importance of soft skill development, value-added sessions, etc.? In, in, your, in your profession, what is the link between soft skills and the profession? As far as I know, um, most of my friends would agree with this, that um, it is very important that you have a grip over your Excel skills. And, uh, you know, if you know a new um, software on how to deal with it, it, it again depends on the company that you're going to be joining what software they use but let's say any new concept or value-added course as you said it, it would be something like learning how to do more more data analytics or anything of that sort it's always a date um added advantage you know think about a situation where there are two acc it's absolutely equal in their caliber an interviewer would be looking what additional thing have you got and if you can sell yourself in, in a manner that the interviewer finds you, you're the perfect pick. You need to be able to you know, tell them why you're the perfect pick. And you need to give them answers, not in just you know, words, but in the form of you know, proof. You need to be able to do it. So that's what they're looking to. So, it's always better to improve your soft skills. A new language would help, a new um, you know, skill on understanding a new software, anything that, that's, that's definitely gonna be relevant. It should be relevant as well. So it depends on which company you get into as well. Yeah. As a faculty, what I felt is, I see a lot of students daily, on a daily basis. So what I think, I felt is that they know what, what, to be, what is to be said. They know it inside but they cannot put that into words, yeah? So there is this gap, there is something is inside your head, but you're not able to put that into words and express yourself. So that is communication gap. There's a lag in your communication. So that would really affect you in your interview as well as in your professional uh, career. So I think as, as Arjun said, it is very important to put, bring up certain soft skills as well as those business uh, visualization data analyst analytics 
technical skills as well. So in logic, we have come up with certain things like value added session, daily presentations, thereby that too in English. So thereby, I think this communication gap can be shortened to a particular limit, I think. So yes, I think these all are good. Good thing. Definitely. Yeah. Another thing is, uh, so be calm with ACCA or just ACCA, which one is better? Is it become with ACCA or just ACCA, which is better? Okay, I've said, uh, I've seen certain employers that demands that you have a, have a degree. Degree. Okay, so it doesn't harm you having a degree. So okay. if you can have um, a BCom or a BBA with you while you go into a company, I mean, ACCA is like, it's a different league, of course. But again, there are certain employers that look forward uh, for you to have a degree. So if you have it, it's always going to be um, something that that's going to be beneficial to you. So again, I would say it's always a good thing to have. Become um, as well. Yes. Yeah. You can take a become as well. Okay. Yes, uh, I have missed out a question in between. This is from Mahima Mariam. Okay, my question is to both my tutor and my senior. That is, everyone is busy asking how to handle failure, but I think that comes only after facing the paper, correct? Every time, even after preparing very well, the first question makes up or messes up the whole exam. So what is that perfect way to handle that moment of fear that ultimately <laughs> affects everyone? What a perfect question. Great question. Who was that Great question? question. I, if Mahima I Mariam. Very good question. Beautiful Mahima. question. Beautiful yeah. question. She has framed it in a very beautiful way. That's a nice question. I'm, I'm yeah. going to have to you know, take her name. Mahima, that, that was a wonderful question. But I think, ma'am, you should answer it first. I think you could. Oh, really? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, fine. Yes, tension is uh, one of your main enemy when it comes to main exams. And in all your exams, you are going to face it. You will have to face it. There is no go and no other go. So the thing is, if you are prepared well, you know that you have completely prepared everything. That itself is enough. That confidence is enough for you to complete that question without any fear so but if, on the same time if you're not that prepared if you're not that well prepared that may affect your confidence level and this fear may uh what drink you off so yeah. i don't think uh no I, the only way is you will have to handle that fear on the first go there is nothing else you should stay firm and you should be courageous to face that fear you should understand it under, try to understand that fear and just keep it aside and go ahead with your exam. Egregious, and what do you want to say? I like the it? word. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, what I would like to say is I experienced this with my SBR paper. I, I, know, I almost, know. almost broke down while I was getting out of my SBR exam it was, yeah. because that was one of my nightmares, to be honest. Uh, but of course, after the exam, when I, when I did an introspection, I found out this is exactly what I want to be. I want to do things that stress me out because it's new. It's, it's something that I need to be comfortable with. So what I would say is after that exam, something sparked in me. I used to do two mock papers. I started yes. doing four. So I would suggest it's important you do random mock papers so that you be comfortable with being uncomfortable. So when you put yourself in a position where you need to push yourself, um, at least 90 percentage, um, you're gonna you know, want to be in a situation where you're, you're gonna move forward. So your mind is gonna tell you to move forward. It's not gonna be like, you know, stop there, just, just leave it, no. It's gonna, it's gonna definitely push you forward. So I would suggest keep doing mock papers. And that normally happens by the third or fourth mock paper. You're gonna be like, it's just a piece okay. of cake. It's just a piece of cake, that's all. Yeah. So just make sure that you understand that you will have this fear, you will have tension, but don't let tension eat you up. That's it, deal with the tension. Be courageous and face it. That's the only way. And it happens to everyone. 
there is not a single student who goes without having this tension of fear i don't think everyone goes through the same phase so just deal with it be confident to face it that's it okay so i hope uh, all your questions are over any yeah, more questions yeah, i think do you have i think we are done with the questions anyone else okay so one last question arjun yes ma'am uh, to the every participants here and to the future acca aspirants what is the one key note one word or a message that you want to deliver um as i said before to achieve anything you want to do uh, especially with acc uh, you know acc is very close to me close to my heart because i've been trying to you know um, personalize it since uh, i was a kid since uh, when i was a small i mean i i used to have cousins and people who did acc and i saw this new thing and i was excited about it because um a normal degree did not give me that excitement of you know just pursuing but acc was something different so i try to make sure that i stay motivated in the track uh, because my intention was was important um it all you know just boils down to that intention of yours of how you want to move forward so i think um just have your intention just kept right and how can you do that by doing affirmations every day you can just wake up in the morning and just be motivated how you can do that you you're not a you know god you're definitely having issues every day you might be emotionally down so you need to make something constant more like a piece of paper you could just write down those um proverbs that just pumps you up every day you can just stick it on the wall and just look at that every day while you feel demotivated you can just remind yourself this is what you need to do so if that's done um that's more than enough uh, i think to keep you going i think that's the most important thing most of the students find difficult it's not the conceptual area that they get stuck with i think it's the fear or uh, the way how they get stuck and the fear of getting stuck that just puts them in a position where they don't know what to do so all you need to do is you know take the step and it's history the rest is history so yeah yeah correct so don't be scared take your step yes forward Absolutely. always forward obstacles happen but get past it okay so any other questions anyone i don't think so I, the last question was uh, from anu yeah. and i think i've answered it i think yes. we have answered yeah, yeah so i hope uh, so that's it so that's it that's it so <laughs> thank you arjun thank you sure for your enough. time your effort and thank you to all dear participants for putting up and thank you very much for making this a very interactive session to be frank i didn't expect these many questions thank you for uh, opening your mind and uh, putting forward the different questions i hope arjun as well as uh, both of us has tried our best to answer your queries so thank you very much all of you yeah Shall we wind up? Yes, definitely. Thank you yeah. so much to all of you for being a part of this meeting. It's definitely an honor for me uh, to, you know, be in a situation where uh, people are asking questions and I have to answer uh, something different. But yeah. I I'm really glad to be in this position. And um, if you guys have anything, um, you know, personal, on a personal note, if you need some kind of help with ACCA, you can message me. Um, I'll try to help you with. at the best of my abilities thank you once again everyone for being a part of the session yeah thank you thank you all on behalf of logic school of management also thank you very much arjun and everyone thank you all right then yeah bye bye have a bye. great evening bye bye yes padikan ini samayam kalenda logic school of management it's simple logic